All right. Well, hello, everybody. This is Kerry Hoffman from Active State in Vancouver, BC. And I am joined by Nathan here. He was the lead dev on Komodo. Um, and we're here, we're here and really excited to tell you guys about Komodo X, the latest iteration of the Komodo family. Um, let me just tell you, start showing you guys my slides here. <coughs> So the point of this webinar is just to, as I said, show you guys the latest features in Komodo X, um, everything that we've added and upgraded, and we're really excited to show, all, show you all of this. Uh, note the Twitter hashtag that we're going to be using for any comments or <coughs> any, if we say any pieces of wisdom that you just find so profound, feel free to tweet those out. And you, make sure you use that hashtag so everybody knows what you're talking about. Uh, but if you're going to ask questions, make sure that you ask them in the webinar. Uh, so then we'll see them and be able to try to answer them. So last time we got quite a few. <coughs> ask questions by hitting the question mark on the right side of your screen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so I'll go ahead and let you Nath uh, introduce yourself, Nathan. Yeah. So I'm the lead Komodo developer. I've been the product lead for... I think a little over a year now, uh, but I've been working on the Komodo, uh, Komodo for about four years now, and been using it for much, much longer. Um, so I'm very passionate about the user experience, the community, and just making Komodo easy to use for people and make it accessible. And um, I'm passionate about Komodo being an application that you can use without needing the documentation. And I'm, I'm Kerry Hoffman. I've been with Active State for about four and a half years, starting as QA and support, and then moving into a development position just over a year ago. And I, I just I love being in development, and I really like working on a product that I, I use the product to make the product, and I get to work very closely with the community as well, so it's, it's awesome. <coughs> So very quickly, we want to get uh, an idea of who is participating in this webinar, uh, whether you're relatively new, so maybe you've been using it for about a year, veterans, been using it for years, or if you're just looking and you're not really sure what Komodo's about. So go ahead and lock in your answers, and uh, the poll will go in a way in three. What, what do you think, Eric? Are we going to have more vet veterans or new users? I think it's going to be looking. I think everybody's excited about the new Komodo UI. I'm going to bet veterans. Let's see. Oh, yeah. you! your internet's faster and you saw that. <laughs> uh, oh, okay. Well, yeah, lots of veterans. That's awesome. So people are, even the veterans are excited about the new UI um, <clears throat> and just all the features. Uh, so we'll <clears throat> carry on with the slides now. Yep. Um, so, uh, we've had, some of you may have already seen our previous webinar, which was in November, and that was just a general overview for Komodo, so though we're doing just Komodo X features in this webinar, uh, you can get a very good overview of all the, or most of the features in Komodo by watching our webinar from November. Um, there was also a blog post that came out after that webinar because we had so many questions we could not possibly answer them all in the time that we had. So I wrote a blog post to answer them. Um, and they were all very good questions, some quite nice and some quite interesting. Uh, and we hope that we get just as many this time. <laughs> we'll probably uh, do a so blog just like it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so, in this, <clears throat> what we're going to be going over mainly is the, uh, there's been upgrades to debugging, uh, there's been upgrades to code intelligence, as many languages, as you probably noticed, have been changing over the last year. Uh, version control has upgraded in Komodo, as well as in, um, we've revamped much of the UI, but uh, the regex tool has been revamped very much. Uh, Nathan, I'll let you take this one. Yeah, so Komodo supports a lot of languages. Um, 
the language that you see at the top here, so Python, PHP, Go, Perl, Tickle, Ruby, Node.js, and of course HTML, CSS, and JavaScript are primary languages. And what that means is these are the languages that uh, we have the most advanced support for. So uh, things like debugging, unit testing, REPL integration, code refactoring. Uh, with those features, we target these languages explicitly. And then all the languages that you see below in red are languages that we also have support for but aren't as deeply integrated. So for most of these languages, we'll have syntax checking and syntax highlighting support. And uh, for some, we'll have some additional features. Uh, but our main focus are the languages at the top there. And then new languages that we add in Komodo X, or in this case, uh, frameworks, are uh, support for Angular, Ember, React, and TypeScript, which is a language. Um, so there you have it. Um, I've, uh, I'm taking the left column here, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah, so <clears throat> this is a little bit digging in more of what we're going to be covering in this uh, webinar or notable things in this release. Uh, so Chrome Remote Debugging, which is awesome, where you can now hook your website that's running, the JavaScript that's running in your browser, hook it up into Komodo and debug it in Komodo as it's running. Uh, we've also added integration for uh, Cordova and PhoneGap, so you can run commands <coughs> uh, from Komodo in your, uh, that'll run in your terminal and build or run your application, as well as uh, integration for Grunt and Gulp, so you can run your tasks or even install tasks from Komodo. Uh, a huge aspect of Komodo that you'll notice has changed is the UI and the UX. Um, at first it will likely be startling, uh, though very exciting and pretty. Um, <clears throat> the, uh, with that, we've, changed, we've added a bunch of things so to, to make it easier to use. So we've got the first start wizard, helps you get started very quickly and set up uh, preferences and uh, color schemes for your, for your startup experience. Uh, there's been uh, a UI unification throughout the platforms so that you, it looks like Komodo no matter what platform you're on, Linux, Windows, or OS X. Uh, there's a new color scheme editor, which it's kind of mind-blowing how detailed you can get, though you don't have to. There's many different uh, color schemes to choose from, so you don't have to do anything. You just do slight tweaks. Uh, there are also f uh, four new familiar key binding sets that you should have a look at in Komodo to make it easier for you to get started if you're coming from another IDE to get started in Komodo, as well as we've redone the uh, Komodo default key bindings to be less verbose, though more intuitive. Uh, if you are used to the old key bindings, though, we did not remove those. They are still in there. You just use legacy. Uh, the new, and then we've also added a new SDK. Uh, it's for adding UI elements, and we're going to demo that later, as well as a project-wide symbol browser, rather than the sections list that we've had for years, where it it shows you all the different symbols within your file. You now can uh, quickly browse them through com Commando, uh, and it's project-wide, so that's awesome. Uh, so go ahead, Devin. So we added support for Ruby 2.1 and beyond uh, for debugging and REPL integration. Now, we already supported Ruby, Ruby uh, 1 and uh, 2.0, uh, and we also supported uh, stuff like Code Intel for Ruby 2.1, 2.2, 2.3. Uh, but uh, because the debugging library we were using in 2.0 and 1.9 uh, was deprecated, uh, Ruby debugging for 2.1 and beyond was not working in Komodo anymore. So in Komodo 10, we addressed this. We added support for Ruby 2.1 and beyond. Uh, so you'll now be able to debug those applications as well as use the REPL on them. Uh, we added uh, Further support for uh, ES6, Emacs Script 6, so that's the latest, most popular version of JavaScript. Uh, we added better support for Node.js, uh, specifically 6.x uh, is now debuggable. Uh, we added support for PHP PSR4. Uh, that's a very big one because what it does is it adds support for the auto-loading specification PSR4, which a lot of the popular PHP frameworks are using. 
So Laravel 5, for example, is now fully compatible with Komodo. Um, so although we're not adding explicit support for the specific frameworks, we're adding the high-level support that these frameworks uh, depend upon, thus adding support for these frameworks. Um, we also, as I already said, added support for Angular, React, Ember, and TypeScript. Uh, we've also focused a lot on speed and performance. So typing performance has always been near instantaneous, or you know, as far as humanly possible, you it is instantaneous. I'm not sure what just happened with our webcams. They seem to have disappeared. Someone from X State could comment for me on that. Maybe it's uh, they look, uh, I'm getting a thumbs up over here, Nathan. All right, might be just me then. All right, uh, so we've also improved the speed and performance of file switching, opening, and closing. Uh, it's a lot faster across the board. What we did basically is we created a whole bunch of new uh, profiling libraries to basically let us find out where Komodo was being slow, and we optimized it thoroughly in those areas. Uh, so the overall experience for Komodo is a lot faster. And this is something that we'll continue to do with future versions. Um, and with the new tools that we developed for Komodo X, that will be uh, very easy for us to, to keep a handle on this and to keep improving this. Uh, so we've got another poll for you guys. Uh, what is your favorite feature in Komodo X? So we've got the new UI, and it, yeah, we don't, we're, we obviously can't list all the new features. Uh, well, no, you don't know that. Our poll is limited to five, so we can't list all of them. Uh, but plug in what you are most excited about so far. Uh, if you click other, you can put it in the chat, I believe, or question. I would do, or just tweet it. Be like, hey, this is my favorite feature. Make sure you use that hashtag. Uh, OK, well, I think it's going to be crumpy bugging. What do you think, Nathan? Um, yeah, crumb debugging. I'm, I think it might be a tie with new UI, I'm hoping. <laughs> right. Yeah. OK, let's see. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, man. Wow. <laughs> it's pretty much a tie. <laughs> That's close. That's pretty close. All right. How many? So I wonder how many of, of you, and maybe that's something, uh, you know, those of you that participate in the forums or what, just want to tweet about it, have actually tried to build system integration because uh, it's, a, it's a great great tool. And I'll be demoing it shortly. Yeah. All right. OK. Um, All right. So curious. I think. Yeah, so now we're going to switch over to Nathan, um, and he's going to start the demo. So, yeah, that slide's not important. Um, I just need to go to here. And so this is a quick, um, to give you some quick background on my demoing this, uh, because some slight graphical artifacts here. I'm demoing this on Linux, but I'm screencast like I'm, I'm my screencast is happening on OS X, so having a little bit of a proxy situation here. Uh, so it should work all right, but if you see some graphical artifacts, that's why. And it's not Komodo; it's my creative setup, because unfortunately, GoToWebinar doesn't let me uh, screencast on Linux. Yeah, if you feel like tweeting at uh, a <laughs> GoToWebinar, <laughs> tweet at Citrix. Yeah, let them know that do that. We want Linux support. <laughs> All right, so uh, here you have the main Komodo UI. Now, for past users, this might look very different from past UIs. But if you look at the, the general blueprint of the UI, you'll see that it's mostly the same. You still have your sidebars, you still have your bottom bar, you still have your toolbar. Uh, the things that, that make this look very different are obviously the colors, the fact that you now have go to anything at the middle of your toolbar here. Uh, because to go to anything, uh, we see this as a very uh, central tool to Komodo that lets you literally get to any part of Komodo. And another new thing you'll see, know here is the uh, side toolbar. So for the uh, side toolbar, or the dynamic toolbar as we often call it, um, what this does is it gives you quick access to your tools. So at the bottom here you have your static tools. These are tools that you just might use at any point during development. And at the top here are your dynamic tools. And what th that means is they're tools that are 
uh, relative to what you are working on. So if I start a new file here, uh, you'll see uh, one of them disappeared there. Uh, yeah, it was version control because my new ver file is not under version control. Um, so this goes for all the buttons here. They're all contextual to what you're doing. So for example, this is node package management. If my project isn't a node project that isn't using node package management, then this button wouldn't appear. And the same goes for Gulp. Uh, the same goes for Cordova, uh, browser preview, and, and syntax checking. Uh, and there's a whole bunch of more buttons here that you're not seeing because my project isn't using them at the moment. So it's kind of a way for us to, to give you access to this functionality without overwhelming you with functionality that you don't have a need for. Mm -hmm. And it's more obvious what it's for when it appears in the right context. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, already said, the new toolbar will also look a little bit differently. Uh, something we very much kept in mind when creating the new UI is that not everyone will like these changes. So, you can in many ways uh, say, I like the way it worked before better. So for example, for the toolbar, I just hit right click and I went to customize. I can say I like the classic layout. And what that will do is it, it puts the uh, go to anything at the right of the toolbar. And it puts all my buttons on the left side. Uh, I can even disable go to anything if I don't like that. Uh, show notification box, it's gone now. If I don't like this new sidebar, I can disable that too. You know. It's, it's up to you. If you don't like some of these new changes, we're not forcing you to, them to, uh, you to use them. They're, they're de defaults. They're defaults that we find sensible. And uh, I think uh, the majority of users do too, but of course everyone is different and not everyone might feel the same about that. Now, this is true for many parts of Komodo. If I go to Preferences and then Appearance, you'll see there's a whole platform integration section where I can say, this is how I like my Komodo to behave. So for example, I can uh, enable classic mode, which will color, uh, for example, my buttons and my scroll bars uh, the way my OS styles them. I can say I want native window borders, which would, um, instead of these custom borders that you see here, will use your uh, OS borders. Uh, I can say I want my status bar at the bottom of the editor. I want to place my window buttons here on the left side, and I want to change the order of them. And, and like that, there's many more settings in Komodo that you can customize to make it your own. And to, you know, if you, if you don't like something we did with the default settings, you can always uh, customize it. Mm -hmm. Right here, you have the interface colors that will allow you to change the colors, not just of the editor, but the, of the interface as a whole. If you go to our website, komodoid.com, the big splash image, if you move your mouse over it, it will actually show you different colors for the color schemes uh, and in a way that it, it really makes it apparent how just how customizable Komodo is. Uh, you can change the interface colors, you can change the widget colors, and you can change the edit editor colors. Widget colors, FYI, a widget is a section in a, a panel here. If I go into customize mode, it's easier to see. And see, this is a widget, this is a widget. And then I can go to different tabs. See that the, the blue borders there, those are widgets. Uh, if you're wondering why am I not showing this off, why am I not <laughs> showing you a different color scheme, uh, because, like I said, I'm, I'm having kind of a creative setup with Linux screen sharing. I don't want to tempt this to break, so that's why I'm not changing it at the moment. Uh, but if you go to our website, you can basically see how that the first, uh, as well as you can just uh, try the 21-day trial to to try all the different color schemes. So did one, you mention, um, I, I think you did, but uh, it it's not the color scheme is not just the edit or the editor area now. It's the whole thing. Yeah, like, exactly. Every single color you see. Yeah. Kind of yeah. I'll show you real quick. This is a new color scheme editor, where you can change all the colors. Of, so right now I'm changing the the editor colors themselves, but if I click here, then I can go to interface, and here I can change all the colors of the UI. Uh, note here, you can change the font size of the UI. We've gotten many comments of people not liking that the font size is a bit smaller in Komodo X, so you can go to the color scheme editor and you can change this to whatever value you prefer and use whatever font size or even fonts uh, you prefer. Uh, We'll, be, we'll likely be changing the default here, 
um, but it is something that you can very easily change yourself. And as you can see, we come with, I think it's around 15 color schemes uh, that you can use for Komodo. Uh, something very interesting about the color scheme editor is if you'll, you'll note when I go to interface, uh, here you can input your own CSS. So if you don't like the way something works in the UI and you can't change it with colors, then you can always write your custom CSS for it. Now for the yeah. classic color scheme, you can see I wrote a whole bunch of CSS because classic is very different from the new UI. And so I had to kind of force some elements to appear very differently rather than to have to, to basically compromise our main UI for this. So another new aspect of Komodo 10 is the first start wizard. Uh, the first start wizard is, as the name implies, something that will run when you first start Komodo or when you upgrade to Komodo 10 and in the future to Komodo 11, etc. Uh, this is really just a way for you to uh, configure Komodo to your biases uh, without having to, you know, install Komodo and then you're like, okay, I wonder how can I change uh, my color scheme? How can I uh, get rid of this custom window border? How can I enable the custom uh, the code minimap? Like, there's a lot of things that people are bound to change when they first start using Komodo that they will then have to start looking for. And that's kind of the kind of settings that we want to facilitate with the first start wizard. Mm -hmm. So these are the kind of settings that people are most likely to have a bias about. And then at the end of it, we'll give you some quick links to get started with Komodo if you're not familiar. Uh, links to the documentation, the form, the bot tracker, etc. So, Let's have a quick look at the build tool integration. So build tool integration, by that I mean PhoneGap, Cordova, Call, Quarms, Node Package Management. Uh, you already saw we have dynamic buttons for it, these here. And what they do is they detect what tasks I have registered. So for Node Package Management, I have the task test dev and production managed uh, registered. For Gulp, I have all of these tasks registered. Uh, for PhoneGap and Cordova, those are slightly different as, because you don't register tasks, you just use predefined tasks. But what we do here is we detect what platforms you're using and then we show you the relevant task for that. So if I had iPhone uh, registered here also, then it would also show iPhone. And basically what it does is it just gives you quick access to it. So if I activate one, it's actually clean, uh, it just executes this in Komodo for me. Uh, now, you might be someone that doesn't like using their mouse a whole lot. That's exactly what go to anything or commando is for. I can go to shell, I can then go to gulp, and then it will show you all my tasks. And I can set up a shortcut to go straight to this subscope. I don't have to every time navigate there manually if I don't want to. You also notice, uh, just as a quick uh, commando tidbit, uh, you have numbers here that you can just press. So rather than typing out shell or navigating to it, I can just press 8 and it will activate that menu for me. Uh, one thing, uh, for all the attendees, please feel free to ask questions throughout this. Um, we'll, we'll take opportunities to answer some of them as we're going. Uh, we'll answer most of them at the end, but uh, do, do post them throughout this, um, and we'll be, we'll, actually, the sooner you do, the more likely you'll, your question will get answered. Yeah. If you see something I'm demoing and you want to see more of it, be sure to ask it right away because we might not even wait till the end. We can do it right then and there. Mm -hmm. All right, moving on. Let's see what's next. Um, so something else that's very new in Komodo 10 is the version control widget and version control in general. Uh, so as you can see, uh, the version control widget gives you quick access to uh, your commits dialog, your project history, your file history, and your log, which is currently empty because I haven't actually done anything yet. But this will show uh, log entries for when I commit something or I pull uh, that sort of stuff. So commit changes, uh, as the name implies, allows you to commit your changes. Uh, it shows you what files have been added, modified, removed, and then I can double click them to, to, to commit them. Or I can select a bunch and then right click, toggle selected or I just do toggle all, and I can also access open file from here, so just to, to look at the actual file. I can also uh, 
go to the full dialog from here if I so desire. So if I don't like doing this from the widget, I just uh, hit the, the, the button here and it will open a full dialog for me. Project history and file history, uh, those have both been in past versions of Komodo, of course, uh, but now they're available in the widget. Worth noting here is that we only show a maximum of 25 entries. If you want to see all your entries, just like with the command dialog, dialog you have a button here to open the full dialog and then it will show all your, di uh, your entries. And the reason we don't show it here in your widget is because this is always on screen. And if we were to show your entire history there, then that would slow down Komodo, which is, of course, not something we want. So version control has changed a lot in general. Uh, you'll see you no longer have version control icons here. Instead, the color of the file indicates their status. So blue means it's been modified. Green means it's been added. And red means it's been removed. You can change these colors if you don't like it. So if you go to the color scheme editor, or we'll go to interface, you'll see you can change your source code control colors here. Uh, this one is worth pointing out, source code control OK. What that means is that it's a tracked file. And that, which would allow you to differentiate between files that are tracked and files that are untracked. Uh, we haven't enabled this by default, or rather we've colored this the same as the default by default, uh, because it's proved to be too chaotic uh, in your UI when you were tracking both. Uh, but for those that like to do this, they can still enable that manually just by changing the color. And of course, there's the dynamic toolbar button here where you can access your source code control entries. Uh, you also still have your old menu entries, but they have been slightly changed uh, to, to be consistent in naming. Uh, previously, uh, the old menu entries tended to be a bit um, inconsistent, uh, and now we've tried to make them uh, consistent and easy to understand. Uh, another big update in Komodo 10 is that unit testing frame here. Uh, of course, you've always had a unit testing frame, but now you can actually do all of your unit testing through here. So if I actually open the unit testing project, I'm just using the workspace switching tool here where I saved a couple of workspaces. I'm going to restore this. Oh, it's opening on my other monitor because that's where I had saved the workspace. So now it should show me a unit test that I had saved on this project. And when I open that, I can now run my unit test. So previously, you had this unit testing frame, of course, but you didn't have this first uh, frame that you saw where I could just select my unit test. Uh, nor were, were you able to create new, uh, new tests from here, or were you able to delete uh, tests. Uh, these are all things that were added, as well as uh, the fact that unit tests are now saved on projects or globally, and they're no longer saved on specific files, uh, which will allow you to more easily work with unit tests and not have to open specific files just to run a unit test. You also notice if you're a PHP developer and you've used this in the past for Komodo, that we now support the latest versions of uh, PHP units. So moving on, another new thing we added, and this is something that's kind of hidden and uh, is mostly of interest for people that like customizing Komodo in the sense that they like writing little user, user scripts. We've created a SDK uh, for the UI. And basically what this allows you to do is create UI elements in code, which will be very handy if you write, write your own user scripts and you want some sort of UI behavior in there. Uh, previously, this wasn't really possible in user, user scripts, or it was very difficult uh, because you would have to have separate UI files or get very creative with your code. So now we have this uh, SDK, which we're, we're going in quite a bit of detail here. It's going to be very simple or it can be very thorough. As you can see we're creating a panel, we're creating a button, we're uh, setting a function for that button. Uh, we're then appending it to the to the uh, main Komodo structure. Uh, we're centering it. I mean, this is completely optional, and we're opening it. So if I run it now, you'll see this is the panel. I have a button which I can click, and then gives me uh, an alert dialog. So it's just a quick example of how it can work. Uh, it can be as as simple or as thorough as as you want it to be. This code is quite thorough. Um, 
but it's it's really meant for people uh, that are writing user scripts and would like to have some sort of UI behavior in there uh, so that they can have UI in there without jumping through so many hoops. Uh, so this is something that uh, is very new. So there might be some slight bugs there. It's something that will be polishing and creating more fast itself in the future. Um, we'll soon be blogging about this to kind of help you get started using this. Uh, we're also soon going to be releasing a little add-on development project uh, that should make creating your own Komodo add-ons very, very simple. Uh, so keep an eye on our blog if you're interested in this at all. Mm -hmm. Do we have any questions so far? Uh, yes, I believe we do. <coughs> Uh, one question that's come up, <clears throat> how to hide specific tabs such as collaboration or database uh, browser? The, uh, this user just moves them to a, one of the panes that they never use, so they just move it over to the right pane. Um, so, uh, yeah, so uh, you can either, you can't, I'm not sure if you're asking if you can disable them, or how you just hide them. So the way that, there's a few ways to hide them. So in the toolbar on Nathan's screen, there's three buttons, and those are to hide the left, bottom, and right pane. Uh, you can also use, so that'll either show, um, hide them or show them. Uh, you can also use the key binding, so it's control, on um, Windows and Linux, it's control alt, P to open places, or the left column. Uh, it's control alt l to open your toolbox or your right column and then control alt or sorry control shift B, control shift for all of those uh, uh, to, to open those um, but you can't you can't specifically uh, disable them uh, they're they're just features that are always there I don't think uh, it's control alt l on Linux because you just make me lock my screen <laughs> <laughs> no it's control shift don't do it. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm and then glad also, it up. a lot of people might not know this, but if you double click on the file tab, that'll actually automatically um, minimize all of the t all of all of the panes. So if you double click on the file tab, everything goes away, and you have just your editor. Yeah. Um, and pointing out also here is the focus mode icon here. Uh, which if you activate that, Komodo goes into focus mode and just lets you focus on your code. Yeah, if I it again, it back. Uh, I think he was asking, though, about specifically these tabs, how you hide them. Moving them to different panes would be a good way. We don't have a, a setting to remove them entirely. What you could do is use our legacy add-on manager to disable the add-on that's related to this. Uh, so this is called legacy for a reason. I'm saying this up front because when I'm going to open this, it's going to look a bit jarring because this is using a lot of the old UI stuff, and as you can see, it doesn't contrast well. Again, this is legacy. We intend to remove this very soon when our new add-on manager has uh, fully replicated all of this fu functionality. So, for example, if I want to, uh, I don't have a need for Collab. I just want that to be gone. I just have to find Collab in here. You can see why this is legacy because <laughs> I'm browsing through this trying to find it. Uh, well, the use publishing since we have that one. Oh, it's a better one to show. How do I even get back? Well, I'm I'm perfectly illustrating why this is legacy. I think, uh, but you can find it in here. Hit the disable button and then restart Komodo, and it will be gone. Yeah. Uh, there's another uh, very relevant to the last section that question, very relevant to the last section you just did, Nathan. I'm not sure if I 100% understand it, but we'll try. How did you get to the config.xml uh, to clarify how did the full configuration screen display that Nathan just did the demo about? Now, I think you're talking about color schemes. Um, the way you normally would get there is either if you're on Linux or Windows, you're going to go edit uh, uh, preferences or, or actually there, yeah, tools and color scheme editor. Yeah, or you can go uh, to uh, edit preferences or, or 
I'm using the unified menu button here. I can also press Alt to bring up the traditional window menu and then go edit preferences. Ooh. And then from there, I can go to color scheme editor or whatever section I prefer. Yeah. And uh, if you're on OSX, it's under the Komodo menu, uh, Komodo menu item in your top bar, or uh, Command comma, which is the standard preference yeah. menu for this application. Uh, and, and then you'll, you'll find the color schemes thinger editor. <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah. So hopefully we answered your question. Um, just to quickly point out here, just to quickly point out here, so this isn't confusing. The entries that you see here at the bottom right of the unified menu, uh, they are the items that are recently accessed. So it all, always will show me the most recently accessed items, so that I have quick access to them. So it might not be the same for everyone. It depends on what you're doing with Komodo. All right, that's all the questions for now. All right, so uh, let's quickly demo um, remote, remote debugging, uh, specifically Chrome remote debugging. So we're going we're gonna to debug uh, a simple web app. Let me close all this, and I'm going to open uh, Chrome debugging workspace. So we're going to debug a simple web app, simple JavaScript web app. Uh, yes, uh, in Chrome, so the Chrome browser. Uh, so currently what people will do when they uh, are developing web apps is they will use Komodo or whatever editor they use to write their code, uh, and then they will launch their Chrome browser and then find the code that they just wrote again and then put a break one on there and then they can debug it. So this is very redundant. You're writing your code, then you're launching your browser, then you're finding your code again, and then you're debugging it. Like, it's, it's redundant to have to find your go code twice. Uh, so what Komodo does is it uh, connects to Chrome's remote debugging protocol such that you can write and debug your code from Komodo. So I have this code here that will toggle a to-do item uh, for a to-do list. Um, and then I can just, I'm going to go to index.html and run uh, run my, my web app. <clears throat> I don't have to go to index.html. I can do it from any relevant file. I'm just using index.html because I don't like to type, and I can just use what it prefills. So I'm running this. It starts Chromium for me. Uh, you have to make sure that you wait for debugging started to actually read. If you start doing anything before that, it won't connect. Uh, this is unfortunately a shortcoming in, uh, in the Chrome debugging protocol. What this also means is that uh, you cannot have breakpoints in the onload event of your page because the debugging connection usually doesn't establish until after that. Uh, this is something that hopefully the debugging protocol will solve in the future, uh, at which point we will properly support it. But for now, you can only put debugging breakpoints on events that aren't the onload event. So I'll toggle this uh, to-do item, and you'll see it triggers in Komodo. I can then uh, debug this as I would any other app in Komodo. So I can inspect all the variables. I can look at my call stack. I can look at the uh, outputs, uh, which is <laughs> very useful in HTML at the moment. Uh, I can step into my code. So I stepped into this, and I'm now in uh, backbone code. So I can inspect uh, what's happening at a lower level if I so desire. And I can basically just say, okay, you can uh, finish executing and bring back up Chromium. You'll see the item is toggled. Mm -hmm. So that's basically Chrome debugging for you in a nutshell. The, the actual debugging uh, functionality is the exact same as always been in Komodo. This is something that we've been uh, supporting and developing for over a decade now. So while the Chrome integration is new, the debugging is very, very stable, and, and, and the debugging tool is very stable and very uh, thorough. Um, so let's have a quick look at, um, or do we have any questions about this so far? Um, no, not right now. I think they might be saving them until the end. All right. Let me know if you have any questions about the Chrome debugging, because this one in particular I feel many people will be interested in. Yeah. Oh, yeah. worth noting, by the way, um, when this was for, like Mitchell, one of our developers, has developed this, uh, and I was first playing with it, 
and I was at the time working on an Electron app, uh, which uses WebKit but isn't actually a web app. Electron is an application that lets you run uh, desktop applications using web technologies. But I figured it's a WebKit app, so hey, it might work. So I started my Electron app using the debug flags, and then I started debugging in Komodo, and what do you have it? It, it actually worked. I was debugging Electron in Komodo. So theoretically, this could work on pretty much any WebKit-based app. Uh, you might have to jump through some small hoops, but it's possible. And it's something that we'll be further fleshing out in Komodo versions and future Komodo versions. So at the moment, we're explicitly targeted at web apps, but maybe in Komodo 10.1 or Komodo 11, uh, we'll add explicit support for Electron or, or other types of applications uh, such that you can easily debug those also. So like I said, it's, it's possible to do that type of stuff at the moment, but it's not something we're explicitly targeting. All right, so let's have a quick look at the Project Wide, wide Symbol browser. Um, so you could already always uh, jump to sections in Komodo. Um, if I see, so, yeah, so I'm, as you can see, I'm, I'm uh, basically jumping to uh, functions in this backbone.js file. Uh, but you couldn't find functions globally in the entire project. So if I go to the this scope now, and I think I have it configured globally for all of my Komodo projects at the moment. <clears throat> As you can see, it will list all sorts of uh, methods and, and classes and all types of symbols. It prioritizes the file that I have open at the moment. But let's see. So this is in a completely uh, different part. So I can open a uh, function commands in command.php. And there you have it. It just opens it for me. So this is something that's been requested for a while. It's uh, it's very very useful to quickly navigate your pro uh, uh, your project. Uh, previously, you might have used go to definition for this type of stuff, uh, but go to definition doesn't always help you if you don't know the exact name of the function or there might be multiple definitions. So as the final part of the demo, we're going to have a quick look at. Um, our framework integration. And I'm going to demo you Angular for this. I'm not going to show you every single language we added support for, because for one thing, that would be quite boring. <laughs> it's just We're just looking at code. And for another thing, it, uh, it would just take too long. Uh, so let me open these files. You can see I'm in an Angular project here. Uh, Komodo is highlighting uh, my Angular code. Uh, so you can see some actual variables here, as well as some instructions. And <coughs> there you have it. Like we basically have uh, Angular support for you now. Uh, this is just, of course, just a small part of it, but it's ju just to demo it to you. So similarly, we now have support for React, Ember, and uh, TypeScript. Uh, for Ember, Ember code is basically just JavaScript, uh, but we added uh, Code and Tell catalog for it. So if you go to Preferences and Code Intelligence. You can enable Ember support here, uh, which will give you code intelligence for all of the Ember libraries. So that is the demo for you. I'll leave this out open for a second in case we have any questions that I'd like to use uh, my screen for. You see one here. Is Chromium running inside Komodo or as another window? So Chromium is is just the Chrome that I have installed, so that can be in, in my case, in this case, it was Chromium. It can be uh, Chrome itself, or you know, potentially any, like I said, potentially any WebKit-based browser. Uh, it's something that you can configure when you go to Preferences and then JavaScript. I can here configure which uh, Chrome executable to use. Uh, as it says here, it is recommended that you use a Chrome executable that only Komodo uses. The reason for this is that it needs to be started with the deb debugging flags. If you already have Chrome running, it didn't start with the debugging flags, and then you start debugging on it, it won't work because it didn't start with the debugging flags. Uh, so you don't absolutely have to use one that only Komodo uses, but if you use one that you use for other purposes also, you just have to ensure that it starts with the debugging flags. But it is a separate window. It's not running within Komodo. Yeah, it's a separate window. Yeah. All right, I'm going to give control back to Carrie. Okie dokie.
Yeah, yeah. Cool. All right. Uh, am I the presenter? Oh, I'm no, still waiting on. for Carrie Hoffman's screen. Go to meeting is popping on my screen. Uh, now, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, so uh, just a quick explanation of the availability of Komodo. Uh, there is the open source version of Komodo. Uh, it's called Komodo Edit. You can download uh, and install. You, you can download it and use the installers that we provide, or you can actually build it yourself as well. Um, and we're always available in the forums to help you with that if you need it. Uh, that's on our GitHub account, so github.com yeah. for Komodo. And then worth noting that's not the same product as IDE, but open source, it's actually a different product. Yes. Yeah. So uh, Komodo is a basic yeah. editor, whereas IDE has all the advanced uh, IDE capabilities. Uh, and then for licensing on Komodo IDE, uh, which is the paid product we've got, we have an individual license, uh, company, um, a company license where the company that you work for is buying the license for you, a uh, group license which would cover a group of people, um, and then an enterprise license where it covers, it, it, you get a, a higher range of support through that license. Uh, yeah. You can see all, all of the pricing for that on our website. Um, I can't remember the link. Nathan, do you remember the link? Uh, you can go to KomodoID.com and just press the pricing button at the top right of your screen. Right. Um, so those are the general. Uh, oh, or there is the link. <laughs> uh, and right now we're doing a sale until June fifteenth, uh, fifty dollars off. Um, any uh, any of the licenses except personal. Uh, the personal license for Komodo is actually quite cheap already um, for what you get. For, given that you get uh, eight different languages in one IDE, uh, it's it's a heck of a deal. Um, and please do tweet at us and let us know or comment in the forums, let us know if there's something that we didn't hit in the in the webinar or in the previous, and if this counts for the previous webinar as well. If we missed anything that you would have found really interesting to hear about, uh, tweet at us with the KomodoX hashtag or comment in the forums and let us know. Um, and yeah. See if yeah. we have any questions. So, what does support for Angular, React, and Ember mean? Uh, well, it means different things for different languages. What it primarily means is that we have syntax highlighting and, where possible, syntax checking, uh, as well as code intelligence support. Uh, so, we're always looking at new languages that we that we will add. You know, limited support for it. By limited, I mean we need to have basic support for it. There's a lot of popularity for those languages. We may look into having more advanced support for it. So say there's an explicit need for, for example, and I don't know if this is uh, the case, but for example, Angular needs something very special for debugging to work properly. Then maybe somewhere further down the line we will add explicit debugging for it. Uh, but the first iteration is always at uh, syntax highlighting, syntax checking, and uh, code intelligence. Do we have any other questions? How do I change the font size? Oh, I think you. I think I uh, You can see uh, my screen, right? Yeah. So if you go into. Am I oh, oh, I had it. So if you go into the preferences and go into the color scheme editor. Once again, to get the preferences, Kerry used the shortcut here. You click Komodo at the top left there, and then you go to preferences. Yeah, I cheated. On Mac, anyway. On uh, Linux Windows, you do use the edit menu. Oops. What am I doing? Uh, okay. Uh, and then. Oh, wait. Do I even know how to do this? Editor? <laughs> so you go to interface. The top oh, left there. Yeah, so edit. That's worth pointing out. Oh, so. In editor, you can change the font size of the editor, whereas in interface, you change the font size of the interface as a whole. So there is a, a differentiation there. 
Mm -hmm. um, and I think uh, I was thinking as we were going through the rest of the de uh, demo that earlier question that was asking about config.xml you might have been actually specifically asking about this um, CSS where you can do custom CSS so this oh, you need to make sure to click on the interface so there's the two there's all the languages and then the aspects of Komodo you have to pick the interface and then that will show you the custom CSS uh, yeah. so just in yeah. case that was your question um, if you like writing, I don't know why I hear echo. Can you mute yourself for a second? Uh, yep. Okay, so if you if you like writing uh, your your codes in in a proper file uh, tab, and it's not specifically for a color scheme, if you go to your profile folder, which you can locate by going to docs.komodoid.com. Uh, if you go to your profile folder, there's a user chrome.less file where you can write out your own uh, CSS or less code, and that will be applied to any any interface, any uh, any color scheme. It will basically be global. Um, you're still muted, Carrie. Okay? <laughs> still muted. I'll, I'll get the next question while you figure out your microphone. Uh, you muted, right? There you go. <laughs> I'm still going to let you answer this one. <laughs> All right. So is there educational pricing, uh, whether students in class or, as in my case, within university IT departments? Uh, there is educational pricing. Uh, what we ask is that uh, you contact sales, and then sales will basically uh, see if you qualify for licensing. Uh, the, the licensing is targeted at educators or institutions. They're not targeted at students. So for students, if you're looking to buy Komodo, we have the individual license, uh, which would uh, go for, for students as well as just general individuals. Um, uh, is the presentation, will the, will the presentation be available on our website? Yes. Because if you missed the beginning, you missed out. Uh, I see Angular 1, but what about Angular 2? Nathan. Yeah, so you should be able to use this for, for both Angular 1 and 2. Uh, the current support is targeted uh, explicitly on the uh, templating side of Angular. On the code side, this basically is just JavaScript. Like Angular, to the best of my knowledge, is just using plain JavaScript. So, if there are shortcomings in Tomorrow's Code and Tell for Angular, uh, we're not aware of any. If you do find some, let us know and we'll be sure to cover that. But it should be uh, fully supported for Angular 1 and 2, to my knowledge. Um, if you need, someone's asking, where do I get help with Komodo? Um, you can tweet at us, but we will likely then tell you to go to the forums, uh, which is Komodo IDE. Wait, no, it's forum.comodoide.com. Uh, or you can just go to the website and find the link under the community uh, menu button. Uh, so you can just, there's a bunch of categories in there. You can ask any questions you want. And me, Nathan, and our other developer, Mitchell, will be in there and answering any questions as well as uh, many community members are actually almost more helpful than us. So uh, yeah, uh, that's that's where you would get help. Do you plan to do, do, plan to do anytime soon? Your microphone is you, 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 you went a little bit garbled there. Do you plan, do you, do you plan, plan to do all these anytime, anytime, soon? anytime soon? Carrie? Yep. Okay. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Yeah, we're going to do, do. Yes, we are. We're going to do a point release uh, coming up very soon. Uh, but we are constantly doing fixes, and we're releasing nights on like a not they're not every night, uh, but they're uh, when there's a valid fix, we're releasing a nightly build because it was built at night, uh, and you can download those from the download page on Komodo ID uh, website. I want to go back to the do plan to point of release anytime soon. To do a point of release anytime soon because it seems our audio is messing up. Yes, we need to do a point of release soon. So. Oh, 
Casey didn't it's, get that. Yeah, I answered that. Yeah, like yeah, I said, the like audio was audio really was like, like, oh, it was very hard to understand. Hard. Maybe it's just between us. It sounds like I'm getting a thumbs up that our audio is okay for everybody else. Okay, well, in case it wasn't, it was, it was it's messed up. Like messed up. Yeah. Um, okay, there is not specific. So this so, is a commercial question. I'm wondering if there was, if there is or was a way to create an excuse from Pearl. If I purchase my other one, I'm able to do that. Create an excuse. No. Um, well, I feel that's almost like a. It's like you say. It's it's not a Komodo question. Uh, Komodo. Well, uh, but we have Active State has a tool for that, um, and that's called the PDK. Uh, so you can build you can build your application into an executable using the uh, Active State PDK, which automatically well, it, depending on how you tell it to build your um, your executable, they can either build it. Libraries included or libraries external, and it has to find find everything. It whatever you want, but you can build like um, Perl or Tickle executables with the PDK or the TDK tools from Active State. Um, so yeah, that wasn't Komodo at all. Oh, but they do integrate with Komodo, so you can use them through Komodo. I assume Firefox does not have such, not have such a debugger so you don't support it uh, for, no. <laughs> I can answer that real quick. We are looking into supporting Firefox also, but b because Chrome is the more popular browser at the moment, we focused our first, our primary efforts on Chrome. Oh. Okay, uh, so we're running out of time. Um, if your answer didn't get question, no. Nope. If your question didn't get answered, uh, we we have them all, uh, and we will be following up uh, to to answer them. I'll be writing a blog post to answer them, um, and that pretty that sums up the presentation. So thank you all very much. Oh, oh my God, the information slide. Uh, hopefully you can still see my screen. So. Komodoide.com is the website. Forum. Uh, is where you get help. GitHub is where you can find all of our available open source repos. Uh, tweet at us at Komodoide, um, and we also have a Facebook page where you can like stuff that we do. Uh, and if you want to tweet at me and Nathan and just say, "Hey, you guys are awesome," uh, feel free because that makes us feel like good, cool people. Uh, and then these, this is the general active state information if you want to get a hold of the company itself. And thanks for joining us. Bye for now.